everybody, Danny Ward here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I want to discuss the difference between an iron, a long iron swing and a hybrid swing. And also the difference between what is a long iron versus a hybrid. Who should be using what? Before I do, I want to ask you a very quick question. Are you a long iron player, predominantly, or are you a hybrid player? Leave it a message in the comments box below and let me know. Because some of you out there, if you're anything like me, you're hanging on to those long irons when really you possibly should be switching to a hybrid and we'll discuss that a little bit later because I was definitely one of those people for quite a while. But let's get cracking. What's the main difference between a hybrid swing or hybrid should I say initially and a long iron? Really simply this. Some people confuse a hybrid as a wood. It really is, look, a modern version, in my view, is a modern version of an iron. It has the same loft. I'm looking at a, a, a four hybrid here and a four iron. So it's got the same loft as a, an iron. The main difference is this. It has a wider sole plate with the weight position further back in the head. Now, what this enables you to do is for people who don't swing the club particularly fast and don't generate enough club head speed, it gets the ball up far, far quicker, carries the ball further and therefore hits it longer. So if you're finding that at the top part of your bag, the, the distance is bunching, so you're finding that your, your threes, your fours, your five irons and six irons, they're getting a bit too close. You're not getting much difference between the two. It's usually because you need a, a decent hybrid in your bag to get that launch, right? That is the main difference between uh, the hybrid and the long iron. So why would you use the long iron, right? So why are people still using long irons? Well, if you're generating club head speed and a fair amount of it, then you don't need so much help to get the ball up in the air because you'll be doing that naturally. However, you know, even for the likes of the best players in the world now, they, some of them are moving, even though they're generating, you know, club head speed that's generating 300 yards worth of drivers, you'll see them putting a version of a hybrid in their bag, right? So what they're doing is, is I've got, for instance, here, the one that I use is I use the Callaway Apex utility here, which has a, a reasonably wide cell plate, but it isn't as wide as, let's say, the Yonix one that I've got in my hand here. So it gives me enough help in my, in my long iron to get the ball airborne and get the, uh, the carry, but it doesn't get me uh, ballooning the ball too high. So what you want to do when you're looking for a hybrid um, uh, and, and looking to, to improve that long part of your bag there, then what you want to look at is, is try a few different hybrids out there because there are a few. I've, I've got a couple here. I've got a pin crossover here, which is, is slightly wider than the Callaway, and then I've got the Yonix, which is even wider still, and they all produce different flights depending on your club head speed. So it's worth going and getting custom fitted for that. So, with regards to the swing, is there a real difference? Well, when you're hitting a long iron off the off the deck here. One of the things that you're going to want to do is you want to you're going to want to change your ball position to the than you would have with a let's say a seven iron. So with a seven iron, it's going to be very central. But with a long iron here, what we want to do is we want to push that ball position up a little bit in our stance. Let me say two or three inch, uh, three inches in front of uh, the left heel here, op almost opposite the left armpit here. Now. From there, all we're going to do is we're going to make a golf swing and we want to be making sure we're still hitting down on the golf ball, but because the ball's positioned slightly further ahead here, we're going to catch the ground, but not as steep as we would do for a 7-iron, we're going to catch it almost level, right? We're going to catch it and almost bruising the grass with a 4-iron as opposed to crunching it with, let's say, a 7-iron. Let's show you what that looks like. So you can see here, I've still taken a divot, I've bruised the ground enough there, struck the ball, struck a really nice shot. Now, this is a four iron here, now that gives me a, a nice flight for me, reasonably penetrating, but it's gonna land, it's gonna stop on the green. For some of you that who are generating enough clubhead speed, a four iron's not gonna uh, cut the mustard, right? And you're gonna want that ball getting up in the air. So with that in mind, what you wanna do is you wanna move to something like a four hybrid, right? Now, the difference between the two here in terms of setup is absolutely nothing. So, some people will think that you've got to tr uh, treat this like a wood and maybe push the ball up in your stance a bit, maybe 
lean back a little bit and if you want any uh, more information about the difference in irons and woods just click on the iCAD just above here and I'll, it'll send you to a video where I do a, a detailed discussion on the difference between the two but look in my view I don't think there's any difference between hitting a long iron versus a, lo a high, you know, low lofted um, hybrid, right? Play them exactly the same way. The benefit, however, of using a hybrid over a long arm is I can play exactly the same swing now, right? Here, and, and immediately, I've just hit that, I would say a good 50% higher. Is that beneficial? Damn right it is. You know, if you're struggling to get um, distance and because the ball's going too low, that is going to carry so, so far. But the other thing with it, with a hybrid, it gives me more control. So th the difference in flight, if you can get that ball higher and higher and higher, that ball is going to land and stop, right? So when it now carries further and lands on the green, it isn't going to be scooting through the back, right? So really, really beneficial, which is why you're seeing a lot of even the best players in the world now putting hybrids in their bag because they're playing on very firm greens, they want the ball stopping and the long irons don't hit it as high as they used to do, right? So that's the first thing. The other benefit of a hybrid is, oh my word, is it more forgiving? You can catch the ground behind the golf ball and it still be okay, right? So I could start here, I could hit a shot, hit the ground behind, I caught that really clean, really, really clean. I'm catching it up, hitting the ball too much on the up, really that ball's still gone. If that was a long iron, that would be so far along the ground, it's untrue. Now, what makes a hybrid do that? If you position the center of gravity low in the bottom of the club and back, it helps to uh, hit the bottom of the equator right at the bottom and you've still got enough weight there to pop that ball up in the air. With a long iron, there's just not enough weight at the bottom part of the golf club to get that ball high enough to, so it's, so it's just so less forgiving. So if you're a long iron player and you've been struggling a little bit, get yourself a hybrid, but certainly get fitted because there are a few out there. Now, if you've tried something that oh, I'm not really a hybrid player, I completely understand. Some of the hybrids out there aren't, uh, they're not all equal, so it's certainly worth trying a few different styles out. But here's the other benefit, right? With a hybrid, I can do loads with it. So I said with a long iron, I wouldn't want to um, move, uh, hit down too much on uh, the long iron, right? Because I would never get the ball up in the air with a hybrid. Some people have argued that you can't hit hybrids low, some of the better players. The reality is, do you know what? With a hybrid, I can do so much with it, so much more, uh, more forgiving. So what I'm going to show you from this angle is, I'm going to show you, I'm going to play a low shot, I'm going to show you how what we can do here is hit down on the golf ball, still hit a beautifully penetrating flight, even with one of these. Let's have a look. So this is where I think hybrids come into their own. So we've said, look, you can hit the ball really high with a hybrid to get more distance. If you've got low swing speed, carrying the driver, maybe 220 maximum, hybrid's gonna really help. But it can also help for different shots. So what I'm gonna play here is I'm gonna play your low shot, right? So I've got, and now a golf club that not only hits it high, but I can also hit it low when I want. And all I do is make a couple of small alterations. I'm gonna move the ball more centrally in my stance. I move my sternum over the golf ball. And all I'm gonna do now is play a standard, beautifully penetrating low shot. That is, the, to have a golf club that allows me to hit a high and a low one at will is an absolute blessing. Because it means that I can play this one club in really windy conditions and still uh, max out my distance and in standard conditions I can get the elevation and max out my distance. It's really really useful. The other thing that hybrid is good for is chipping, right? So one of the things that it also does is if you struggle with your chipping, particularly like chip and runs on the edge of the green, you might fat a few, thin a few and whatever. The great thing about a hybrid is you can catch the ground slightly behind when you're chipping but because you've got the sole plate the club just simply glides through and helps you chip. So you can also use it for chipping as well. So you get yourself set, go down the grip, take your normal chipping stance, right? Ball fairly central, and then just and make a, a simple backswing and forward swing, and that ball pops up just enough and gives you a nice running shot. Maybe that one's a little bit too far because I'm not really on a green, but you can play small little chips with it. So it's very, very useful. So let's summarize, what did we discuss today? We wanted to know what is the difference between a uh, long iron swing versus a hybrid swing. And my answer to you is this. 
nada. Very little, if anything at all, that you need to worry about. Treat them exactly the same. The real key to this video is this, is to understand whether you should be using a long iron or you should be using a hybrid. If you're a low swing speed player, you need to be thinking about, really thinking about potentially putting a hybrid in your bag if it's not already there, right? Now, if you've tried hybrids and they haven't really worked for you, the chances are they may, you may have tried a few that aren't quite right. As I showed you, there's a few different ones on the market, various different sole plates. When I moved from my long iron to a hybrid, I didn't go to a big chunky one, right? I went to a, uh, a fatter, or fatter sole plate than I was used to, and it was more than enough for me to get the elevation that I needed and therefore the distance. So try a few out, go and see your local pro, get custom fitted and see how you get on, right? The, the next thing we said, look, the great thing about hybrids as well is, is whether you should be using it, they're more versatile, right? They're more forgiving. You can catch the ground behind the golf ball. You can do loads of things. You don't even, you don't have to put a perfect swing on a hybrid, but because the center of gravity is really, really low, you still get that ball. It's still uh, much more forgiving to get the ball going forward and hit it a decent distance. You can't really do that with a, with a long iron. They're too unforgiving. Having said all that, Long irons feel fantastic to hit when you hit them well. So for those of you who've got high club head speed and want to persist with your long irons, do so. But consider maybe going for what I've gone for, which is a slightly thicker one in your real long irons, like a, a two iron, which is what I've done, right? But if you've got any questions on this matter, do leave them in the comments box below. And of course, if you know anyone who might benefit from understanding the difference between the two, hybrid and a long iron, then please share it. And of course, if you're enjoying the content and you want to receive it in your inbox every week, don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell, and I'll see you next week.